you want to say anything? I, I want to tell you a story. It's called Ayu and Rotengo. Okay. And Ayu is a female troll and she's got red hair. And she loves being a troll. But sometimes, you know, she, she just would love to, to fly. And, but that's no problem because there's Rotengo. And Rotengo is a male elf. And Rotengo loves Ayu. And Ayu loves Rotengo. And Rotengo comes to her and says, do you, do you feel like flying? Let's, let's fly. And Ayu says, yes. And she climbs on his back and they fly and they, you know, they play with the wind and they fly to the rainbow waterfalls and they fly to many different places. And one day they were flying again and the wind, you know, was, was in, a, in a bad mood. And he, he just kind of was grumpy, you know, and you could feel that something was brewing up. And uh, he kind of thought, oh, look at this, are you in Tango, an elf and a troll? They, they shouldn't be together. It's really annoying. What, what do they think? And, and so he started um, blowing. And he thought, well, you know, I, I gonna blow them apart. So he became that storm and he was um, chasing Ayu and Rotengo and Rotengo said, are you, uh, be careful, hold tight, it's really stormy and I said, I'm doing my best and they were thrown around by the storm and uh, they were trying, you know, to escape but the storm, you know, was, was chasing them no matter where they were going and um, Rotengo saw this um, cave over there and, and he said to Ayu, we are going to try to to get to this cave, to the safety. But the storm, you know, the, the storm wasn't stupid. And he said, ah, I can see. They want to get in this cave. And he blew in an almighty blow. And I was blown off Rotengo's back. And Rotengo fell down to the ground. And, and there he lay. and. Um, he had his uh, wing broken and he was full of pain and he, he didn't know whether Ayu was still alive and so he was full of sadness and full of pain lying on the ground and the storm had calmed down again. And he, he looked at what he had done, he looked at Motengo and um, he felt miserable. He felt so bad and he came back to his cloud, because he's got a main cloud, you know, where he resides. And he got awfully depressed. He said, I'm such a bad, bad wind. How could I have done that to my playmates? with whom I was playing and I just can't bear it and he sunk into the cloud full of depression and Ayu, Ayu you see Ayu had been blown to the top of a tree and it was not a nice situation because she was actually hanging on a branch, you know, on her clothes. So the clothes were the only thing which actually held her there. And it was a very, 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 very tall tree. Very tall. And in the beginning, you know, she was kind of so frightened as you would be. And she'd be, you know, she'd be making movements and stuff. And, and, and then she noticed, oh my God, if I move, you know, the chance of me falling down is, is m much bigger. So she, she tried to calm down and she tried to not move, not move at all, you know, and she was just 
hanging there in, in stillness and praying, praying that Rotengo was still alive and praying that he would come and rescue her. There, 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 was, there was nothing, nothing she could do. Nothing. Just hang there and pray, I suppose, in stillness. Rotengo, on the other hand, was in so much pain that he lost his consciousness. And he was just lying there on the ground. And then a snail came by, a snail with a beautiful red house on top of her. And the snail um, saw Rotengo and, and she took pity with him and she thought, oh, he needs to go to his people, you know, that they can heal him. So she loaded him, but she opened her door to her house and she loaded him into the house. And Rotengo didn't know this because he had, you know, lost his consciousness. And the only thing he felt was like when the snail, like snails do, moved very gently, very slowly. He felt this movement, you know, this rocking movement. So the snail was on her way. And the wind still was depressed. You know, he, he just didn't want to be a wind anymore. You know, if, if the wind, I suppose, if the wind could have committed suicide, he would have done it. But he was the wind, you know. So he was sitting on his cloud, being really depressed. And um, Ayu was still hanging there. And she thought, you know, if that's my fate, if I have to die, I, you know, I want to have it as painless as possible, just let it be over, over with. And uh, I, uh, if there's anything I can do, please show it to me. And then um, the spider came along. And the spider saw, are you hanging there? And the spider wove a very, very thick thread from the branch Ayu was hanging over to a pine tree. And it was a very thick thread. And the spider came back to Ayu and said, My darling, I see you're in trouble and I've woven you this thread. And the only chance you've got now is that I'm going to bite through your clothes here and then you have to grab onto the rope and slide over to the tree and climb down. That's your only chance you have. And um, Ayu knew that. And uh, she said, yes, yes, I'm, I'm ready to take that risk. Um, you know, I'm going to otherwise lose my life anyway. So she said, I'm ready. And the spider, you know, was eating through the clothes. And the spider said, now. And I hang on to the rope. She was sliding down over to the palm tree. And she climbed down. And the spider wove a dress for Ayu. A beautiful dress only, only spiders can weave you know, with reflecting all the colours in them and, and, and beautiful patterns on them. And um, I said, uh, I, I owe you my life, weaver of death and life. Thank you so much. And uh, I bowed to the spider and they gave each other a, a huge hug. And the spider said to Ayu, now my child, go and find Rotengo. He's alive. He's been taken by the snail of the red house. And Ayu was very happy to hear that. So she, you know, started to walk towards to find Rotengo. And um, she came to a little, you know, water, river, and she asked, Dear River, have you seen Rotengo by any chance? 
in the river said, oh, you know, just a couple of hours ago, a snail with a red house came by and she was going to see, uh, get Rotengo to, to his people so that he could get healed. So, I used to thank you very much. And she kept on going and she came to the fuchsia tree and that's the entrance of the elf realms. Mm. And fortunately, she knew how to enter because not everybody can enter, you have to know. And uh, in front of the fuchsia tree, when it's an elf realm, is a beautiful stone bowl with water in it. So she dipped her fingers into the water and she sparkled it like this. It said flowers open. And the flowers, the fuchsia flowers, opened wide. And she was sucked into the flowers and it was just um, purple and pink. And I you knew when you're in there your thoughts count. So she thought about bring me to a tango. I want to go to a tango. And she was in that room where Rotengo was lying and that the healer of the elves, an old man, was with him and his wing was covered in a, in a paste of, made out of flowers. And the elf and Rotengo was still unconscious. And um, the elf healer said to, uh, Are you here you are? Very well. He's fine. Don't worry. He's gonna heal. The only thing he needs now is you and your love. And he looked at her and he said, Oh, I see. You brought the wisdom of the spider with you. Lie beside him and wrap your arms around him and give him of the wisdom of the spider and the love and everything will be fine. So she lied next to Rotengo. In the meanwhile, it had been wind still for the whole time. And there had been several days passing since that. And the birds and the trees were really bored, you know, nobody who was going through their leaves or their feathers and they were starting to shout for the wind and they said, wind, wind, come and play with us. Where are you? Come and play with us. And the wind in the cloud was hearing it from far, far away, but he, he didn't, nah, he didn't really want to hear it. And the whole nature and everybody, the whole voices became like a, orchestra. Wind, wind, come and play with us. And it got so loud, he couldn't ignore it anymore. So the wind, you know, came slowly out of his cloud and said, what, I, I am not a proper wind. I've done this awful thing to Ayu and Rotengo, who used to be my playmates. How I just, you know, I can't do this anymore. And the birds on the trees said, oh, wind, wind, are you and Rotengo are fine. You just were in a bad mood. Winds are sometimes in a bad mood. That's just who you are. They are fine. Don't worry. And when the birds on the trees had said that are you and Rotengo were fine, a big sigh came out of the wind like a very nice breeze. He was so relieved. And he said, thank you, birds and trees. I'm going to go now and have a look for Ayu and Rotengo. And so he went and he came through the open window and he was softly touching their faces. 
and their hair. And they were both asleep because I, you, also was very tired. And he, he said to them, I'm so sorry. I didn't want to hurt you. I'm really sorry. And for an apology, I'm going to give you a gift. I'm going to give you the lightness of the heart. And he was blowing the lightness of the heart into him. And he said, now, my friends, no matter what is going to happen, even when you have storms in your life, nothing can happen to you because the lightness of the heart will carry you through them. It will carry you above them. In this way, I never ever can hurt you again. And the wind kissed them a goodbye on their foreheads. He left to play with the birds and the trees. And that's been my story. Wow, thank you. Yeah. That's amazing. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh gosh, that's good. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah.